There we go. Let's hear the reading of the word for this evening. Mark chapter 11. Is that it? Mark chapter 11, verse 20 to 24. I'm reading Luke, sorry. Yep. Okay. The next morning, as they passed by the fig tree, he had cursed. The disciples noticed it had withered from the root up. Peter remembered that Jesus had said to the tree on the previous day and exclaimed, Look, Rabbi, the fig tree you cursed has withered and died. Then Jesus said to the disciples, Have faith in God. I tell you the truth. You can say to this mountain, May you be lifted up and be thrown into the sea, and it will happen. But you must really believe. It will happen and have no doubt in your heart. I tell you, you can pray for anything. And if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. That is the end of the law. Thank you. Thank you very much. There are different things. Let me pick this up. Good evening to you all and welcome to the Chimera Show on this uh, uh, on this Sunday evening, June eighth, two thousand and fourteen. Thank you for joining us during this evening uh, show of our broadcast. I hope that you guys are refreshed coming back from your churches. Well, um, for some of you, you go to churches where they do not feed you. So my job is to feed you properly and to make sure that um, the real thing for today come to you. So I'm going to make a little announcement. Um, someone, Barbara, are you are you online with me, Miss B? Uh, yes, I am. What is the time in Wisconsin now? Uh, 8.19. 8.19. This service will be short. We will pray. And... Um, it will last for like 20 minutes or 30 minutes highest which will be done with this service by this is eight did you say 819 yes okay by nine uh by 9 30 9 30 central time which is 10 30 eastern time uh 7 30 Pacific Standard Time, I am having a service for Pentecost. Today is Pentecost Day. And um, you were ready. How many of you read my tweets today? I did. I did. No. Okay. What, what, what was the one thing that was outstanding in the, in the tweet? What really touched you when you read it? Your miracle. How to do what? How to keep 
your miracle. I will stop from losing. Let me read. Okay, that was that was the information about this service that I'm doing right now. But there was, if you read, if you go below the information about the service that is just on, you will see my tweets for today on Twitter. I had seven tweets on Twitter today. Could someone tell me, let me know those who are following the ministry, those who are reading what I'm sending them. I have to. I got him to. Just have to. My oh. thing is slow. So, but we do have enough. Okay. What was the one thing you read from my tweets? Out of the seven I, tweets that I sent, what touched you? What did I say? I like that before. The Holy Spirit is your only source for power, life, and the development. For you, power, life, and development. Thank you very much. Thank you. Because wherever the Holy Spirit appeared, there will be light. And light stands for development. Remember what it was said of Jesus. In him was life. And that life was the light of human being. Light means development. You should have an affirmation written and placed on your fridge or placed in your, in your, in your bedroom that says, I have the light, I have the life of God in me, the life of Christ in me. That life has become light. It is developing my spirit, it is developing my mind, it is developing my body, it is developing my finances, it is developing my children. Use what is in the gospel for prayer, for pronouncement, for affirmation, so that you will prosper. What again, what again did somebody else read from those tweets? If you go to twitter.com. Okay, let me explain something. If you go to twitter.com slash Itikai Mary, you can read my tweets. All the videos, every video that comes out goes straight to Twitter. It is there automatically on Twitter. What did number five say? He's the doorkeeper of the universe. It's wonderful. Without him, uh, I will have no open door. Nobody will. There you go. Opportunities, yeah. privileges, open doors. Yeah. Without him, nothing. That's interesting. Who, who again read those tweets? I like number five, too. That's uh, my favorite one. Okay, number five. Okay. Did you guys see the one that talks about the two spirits yeah, one, yeah, one number, seven. number seven one is leviathan representing the trinity of <laughs> of satan <laughs> and one is the holy spirit representing the the trinity of the most high god, god. okay but then the touchdown happened somewhere who can tell me what this touchdown was on that tweet on those seven tweets there was a touchdown. And the touchdown is what I am teaching, I'm preaching, I'm ministering in the next one hour. By 9.30, I'm ministering on that. Remember what I said? When I finished talking about the two spirits, I then added a word which is a touchdown, which says, follow the what? The good ghost. The good ghost. Follow the good ghost. That's the title of the next service that I'm holding by 9.30. Which is 10.30 Eastern and 7.30 uh, 7 uh, Pacific South, uh, Pacific uh, West. Follow the good ghost. That's what I'll be dealing with. All right. You see... If you receive your healing through, through my faith, many a times you will not be able to keep that healing. Benny Hinn was saying that he, he sometimes really feels bad that people come to his crusade 
and at the end of the day they get healed and uh, later they lose the healing they lose the healing Kenneth Hagen talked about it all the great men of God talked about people receive healing and they lose it people receive spectacular um, prosperity by the working of miracles the working of miracles produces spectacular things it's not just miracles but with signs and wonders it produces spectacular stuff why is it that people lose it why do they lose these spectacular miracles signs and wonders they were blind and they came to a crusade or a conference or a healing campaign or a healing school or school of prosperity and something happened quickly god gave them a turn around in money or god gave them a turn around in maybe they received cancer disappeared from their body i've seen people who grew the holy spirit grew new intestine they didn't have um a certain part of the intestine was shorter than the other one the holy spirit grew it i mean i've seen i've seen testimonies of people whom the holy spirit grew new brain jesus gave them new brain their ears popped open for the first time and they began to hear they couldn't talk and they began to talk pain left their back and their waist and their and their legs crippling problem left the miracles of demons vanishing from the bodies of people why do people lose these precious things people of god they lose them first and foremost because of what has been read this evening you see I'll share this with you. This is going to be important. Um, pastor Hayes, one of the one of the pastors that I have so much honor for, he's an elderly gentleman now. The daughter, the daughter is into 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 that space and is doing God has God has healed her of, of I mean she had dialysis and God told her not to look at the dialysis, but to talk to her kidney, and it will be and it will start working and it began working again. The spirit of death had visited her. She saw oh, she's good. She told the spirit of death not to come back again because the spirit of death told her, we know that you are stepping into your father's shoe and that's why we want to stop you. And she told the spirit of death when it came back the second time not to come back and it has never. All kinds. This is somebody that has some breakout. Something broke out. For the something boils, broke out of her body. But let me tell you, the father prayed, the father fasted, the father sending other men of God and women of God to pray, nothing happened. He sent tithe and offering, nothing happened. Many of you, when I start teaching this kind of thing, I'm teaching you walk away because you think that I'm, I'm not involving God in it because that's what they taught you and brainwashed you. I'm talking about the same man whose mother died when he was a young boy and he went to the back of the house and cried out to God and said, why did you let my mom die? And God said, I never let your mom die. Do you see that little church across the, across the street? He said, yes, that's the church that killed your mother. He said, how? He said, because they did not teach your mother how to have faith and get her healing. The preacher killed your mother. God was telling this young boy, the church members killed your mom. They are rebellious people. They are not implementing the power and authority of people getting healed and keeping their miracles. Or people receiving big things from God through the working of miracles, signs, and wonders. We are not talking about the blessing here. We are talking about people receiving spectacular 
spectacular intervention by God that qualifies as miracles, signs, and wonders. And they lose it. Because nobody is teaching you how to keep it. And if you didn't work for it, if you did not end it, you will lose it. See, the children of Israel saw God parted the water, but it wasn't their faith. They were not involved in it. They were just, they were just spectators watching a movie that Moses and God was doing. That's why it was easy for them to go and worship bells and Moloch and all kind of nonsense gods and goddesses while they were receiving manas from heaven, being fed by God, being divinely kept healthy. Not one person died as they were entering. You will not hear of one person died except through rebellion. The wonders of divine health followed them. But they, re, they, they went to sin easily because they did not aim that miracle. They didn't participate. They did not know the secrecy, the intricate and intra things that were involved for those things to happen. Moses knew, Joshua knew, Aaron to some extent knew, but the whole of the people did not know. And that's why they quickly can turn away to worship other things, even after receiving miracles. They even saw God came down on the mountain, and the mountain was quaking. They even begged Moses, tell God not to talk to us again. Let him talk to you, to us. They saw all this, but because it was not their faith, they did not earn it. They didn't work for it. So it didn't make no sense. They can throw it away. What you don't work for, what you did not sweat for, what you did not pay your blood for, you don't take it lightly. You, you I mean you just take it for granted. And God does not. Think about it. Think about what I've just said. And that has been happening right from the time of the Exodus up till today. 90% of people who run after me for miracle signs and wonders want it to, they want to participate in the drama. They do not want to participate in the planting of the wheat, the cutting of it, the production of it, and the baking of the bread. They want to eat the bread. I am the one who is to do the fasting and prayer and produce the miracle with Christ and they will not give me a dime. And some of you had the audacity to write to other ministers and say that I'm not praying for you enough. And you think those ministers will not come back and tell me. And they ask me how much you've paid me for me to do that. I said nothing. And they, and they, and they, re, and they just deleted their emails. Some people have the audacity. People who've never sent me a dime that I've been praying for. I pray for you, you receive one miracle. I pray for you, again, you receive another miracle. I pray for you, God gave you a $100,000 job. You never gave me a dime. And then you come back to me to pray again when you have trouble. You think I'm stupid? And you go to go and report me to another minister of the gospel? And he then call me. You think they are stupid? They do not understand what I'm doing. They do. And they respect and honor what I'm doing. They call me and they read your email to me. The email you send to them, they're ready to me. And it's not just one person, many people. And they're ready to me. And when I told them that you've been following me, you've never sold a dime, they immediately say, oh, we don't even want to have anything to do with this person. You want to run around and brag? Go ahead and brag. Go ahead and talk to people. You want to go and see a doctor, you paid. You want to go and see a counselor, you paid. You want to go and see a psychotherapist, you paid. Even if you spend 10 minutes with an attorney, you are paying. How many pastors have time to pick phone and be praying with you and talking with you? They will, when you call, you are forwarded to somebody else who pray with you, who pray for you. And if you really want the giant to pray for you, you pay him. He doesn't have time even to come and be praying with you. 
Who are you that he will, he will, he will leave writing his book or traveling about and doing the important thing? He's coming to sit down to pray with you and listen to you. Are you serious? And, and I, I just hope that people do not drive me to that point that I just distribute everything to people here and there to do it. And you don't, you, don't, you don't get involved with me. You get involved with the other people. And they are ministering too. Because I make sure that what is in me is in them. And when you call them, miracles, signs, and wonders will happen when they pray for you. And that's what's going to happen when you will call Miss B in, 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 in uh, Wisconsin. That's what's going to happen. And other people who are involved in the prayer network, etc. If you do not participate in the faith thing, you don't take this thing as serious. That's why some of you, when you call some of the prophets in Africa or some of the, some of the apostles in England and so on, they ask you to pay $1,000. Some of you have paid that money and nothing happened. And you've never given me a dime. And you want me, you think that I'm joking? A time has come that before you will even see me, you have to set up an appointment. Because you cannot even do that with your own pastor in your own city. You cannot just call him. You know his phone number, but you cannot even call him. Because you know he will not pick it up. Where somebody is relax and want to bring you in people people take it for granted you see privilege and opportunity are open for people to come and know god and to come and relate with christ and to receive from the holy ghost I'm on. now let me continue to tell you what jesus said to the to the man that i was talking to you about when the daughter had this breakout on her body, he prayed, he fasted. And I've started introducing some of you to those kind of aggressive and violent prayer. And many of you are walking away. Jesus, did, did you hear when Jesus talked to the fig tree? Did you hear when he started to pray and said, in the name of God, my father, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, my co-God, I command you to wither and die. No. He never said that. He simply said, nobody will eat fruit of thee anymore. That's what he said. Learn from Jesus. And I'm trying to point you to the way God does his business. Especially after you are born again and filled with the Holy Spirit, there are things that God wants you to do of your own. And he will back you up. Don't disturb him anymore. Go ahead and do it. God did not tell Moses, when you reach the Red Sea, stand there and start to fast and pray. Tell the people to declare fast for three days. Why do we love all these rituals? Tell the people to stand at the Red Sea and dance and sing for me and worship me. Let them, let them, let them pray different kind of prayer. In fact, tell any of them who has a, an Apple iPad or a Samsung tablet, Tell any of them who has a, 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 a laptop or a desktop to turn immediately. Let them, let them bring out a song for one of the new, uh, 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 new gospel songs. Let them turn it loud and play it on their boombox until his heart is glad enough. Then he will perform miracles. He never said so. He did not say stand, stand by the water and begin to dance and clap and speak in tongues and roll on the ground. No. He didn't say to them, begin to talk to the demon that is in the water and drive away queen of the coast from the water. Then the Red Sea will part. No. See how God does his business? Easy, simple. He simply said to Moses, when you reach, hit the thing. Hit the water. Don't even say anything. Just hit it. Elijah, did you ever see Elijah praying to God? When he was at the Jordan, he simply took off his, his, his coat and hit the water and the water parted into two. If it is today, we will say that's magic because he did not pray to God to part the water. That guy is already filled with God. Why does he need to talk to God? 
That's why sometimes you call me, I simply make a pronouncement. Why? Because I'm filled with him. He knows me, I know him. He lives with me, I live with him. Naaman came all the way. I think he was from Syria or where. The man of God did not even come out to come and pray for him and lay hand on him and let the leprosy depart from him. He sent his servant, go and tell him to go to the Jordan and let him go and bath seven times. That's it. He did not repeat it twice, just once. He did not come out and begin to pray in the name of Jesus, in the name of God, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah, Jehovah Rapha, my healer. He never came out to do that. Have you ever been to a medicine man, a witch doctor, a wizard, and he began to, to, to pray to Lucifer or whatever? No. They simply go ahead and do what they have to do because they have those things living in that place with them. Why don't you learn this from me? Every time it's not you disturbing my father in heaven, he deserves some peace. Even after he has given you power to be his witness, you are still wanting him to come and do what you should be doing for yourself. And that is what some people have provoked me so much. They will call me to pray for them to pass an exam and they are not willing to pay the price to go and ask authorities in that field, how do people pass this exam? Help me. And then he decay Mary will add prayer to it and you will pass. You just go and sit down and think that heaven is coming to write an exam for you to pass? Are you serious? When he has already told you that you are going to pass if you do your own part. The walls of Jericho will not crumble until the children of Israel do their own part. Walk around it on the seventh day. Shout, blow your trumpet. Simple. Go and do your homework. That's the meaning. How do other people pass the exam? Go and learn that first. When you've learned how other people pass the exam. For example, you want to become an attorney. Why not look for a retired judge, a magistrate, an attorney of, of renown in your area and pay him some money and go and sit down and let him teach you. You are too proud to go and sit down before other people to tell you something. You think you know it all, whereas you know nothing. And at the end of the day, you call me to pray and fast for you. I'm fasting for a stupid person. And stupidity will not take you nowhere. Stupidity and foolishness and your inability to do what you are supposed to do to progress in life will hinder miracles, signs, and wonders. God told this man of God, stop praying. In fact, he went to God and said to God, why is it that I paid my tithe? Why is it that I released seeds for my daughter to be healed? Why is it that I prayed in tongues? Why is it that I have fasted? God, this is the answer he heard from heaven. Mr. Hess, he said, yes, sir. When are you going to do something about your daughter's uh, sickness? He said, what are you talking about? He said, when are you going to do something about it? That's what God was telling him. He said, all this thing I've been doing, is it not what your word said? He said, no, you are, re you are a rebellious pe person. He said, how am I a rebellion, a rebellion person? He said, go back and read what I said you should be doing. You have me inside you. You have the Holy Ghost inside. You have Jesus inside. In Jesus is me, the Father. Go and begin to talk to that sickness. And tell that sickness to leave your daughter. Don't talk to me. Talk to the sickness. That's how the man learned. And I have learned it the hard way myself. Because everything is not prayer. Everything prayer. You don't even know how to manage money. How to put a dollar aside for yourself. God is coming to do it for you. You must be crazy. God must come to teach you how to manage money. Are you serious? And when, when your finances collapse, you blame God and blame other people. Immediately that man, what took that man three years to be praying and fasting and giving? It took him three months 
for the daughter was doing was ironing the laundry and suddenly a warm feeling came upon her and the entire for the something for the something break out on her body just disappeared in a second in a second you if it is you i ask you go and begin to talk to your problem for the next two months you will tell me no you cannot do it you cannot do it yet when a doctor tell you to take your medicine for one year you do it i ask you speak to the problem for just two months every day find five minutes and talk to the problem you will not do it because you want God to come from heaven and do it. And God is saying to you, you must talk to the mountain. Go and speak to the mountain. Until God says your obedience, you won't be able to keep your miracle. And that's why many of you, when you come to like to my ministry, our ministry, you go to Benny Hinn, you go to T.B. Joshua, you go to Mike Modoc, you go to Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, you go to Paula White, you go to Creflo Dollars, you go to T.D. Jax, you go to Manasseh Jordan, you go to all kind of good, bad, ugly, crazy people. You know, you go to all these people. You receive healings. Few days later, you go back to a coma. The cancer comes back because you did not participate in it one you didn't believe for it you don't even believe what the bible says in john chapter 1 verse 12 please miss b from wisconsin read it to us let us see how we can keep our miracles john 1 verse 12 for those of you who are still begging god those of you who think that you are a beggar you are still begging god please god please that read what the bible says about us John 1 verse 12, please. Guilian, if you, if you are, I don't know whether you, you have, you've left the hospital. If you are at home. Okay. Okay. John 1 and 12. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Did you hear that? In the King James Version, what did it say? But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Even those, all they did was they do not even fully understand him or fully believe him. They just believe in his name. He gave them the susia, the dynamism, the authority the dominion ability to become the children of God. They became elevated to that place which the Chimera called the glorified life where the devil cannot touch you. That's how you're going to protect your miracle is by participating in the miracle. Your faith is going to keep your miracle. Number two, let me say this to you. When you receive a miracle from Jesus, from the Holy Ghost, when you receive a miracle from the Father, Satan will come to take it away from you. Everything God gives you, Satan will come to contest for it, or people will come to contest for it, whether you believe it or not. This is not something that God is going to protect for you. It is you. The same Mark 11, 20 to 24 is applicable. It is you that must educate the devil. For example, I heard Kenneth E. Hagen telling Satan, in case Satan, you cannot read, in case you are not able to read English, in case you don't understand your alphabet, let me read to you what the Bible says about me. And he began to read and tell the devil. He began to read, Satan, listen to what the Bible says about me. And the devil left. I was walking on the road and the devil was telling me what is what are going to happen to me. I said, really? I said to him, listen, let me tell you who I am and what I am in the kingdom of God. And I began to quote it to him. He left. In fact, when I'm praying and the devil tried to remind me of things, I tell him, thank you, Mr. Devil, for reminding me. I opened my, I opened my book and I write it down. I said, do you know Satan... 
You are a very good worker. What I forgot, you remind me. And I'm going to pray about this now. When I began to do that, he forgot about me. He didn't come back to me up to today. When I'm praying, Satan doesn't remind me of uh, people who owe me a debt, people who did me wrong, people who did this, people... Because he knew that I'm going to pray about it immediately. I'll write it down and pray about it immediately. And men, most of the time, I'll accuse him to be the one that is instigating the people. He didn't like it. He walked away from me, never came back. When the devil will tell you about somebody who, is, who owe you money, you stop praying and you go and call the person. Or somebody who did you wrong and you stand up from praying. You, be, you begin to be angry with God. Why God did not? You do not know it is the devil who is doing it. Tell the devil directly, not God, to come and talk to the devil. No. You've been taught that if you want to talk to Jesus, you go and talk to his mom. His mom will go and talk to him. Are you serious? Where did you see that in the Bible? That when you want to talk to Jesus, you go and talk to John the Baptist first. Or you go and talk to Angel Michael first. Then Angel Michael will go and talk to Jesus. Or you go and talk to uh, Mary, queen of the stars or queen of something. And then Mary will go and talk to, to, to her son. You must be kidding me. You must be kidding me. When the church lost her power, her spiritual power, she began to bring all these nonsense things into the kingdom. Immaculate conception of some eggs, some people. Immaculate this. Immaculate that. Where, where, where is the story of Mary that shows that she was immaculately con conceived? Are you serious? That's interesting. And we've been living with this fallacy all of our life in the name of, of, of all these churches. And this has been going on for centuries. We've allowed that to go on for thousands of years. A church will wake up and make up their own doctrine and will go for it. You're serious? And people are willing to die for those doctrines and to kill for it. Do I respect the mother of Jesus? No. But is it important even to Jesus? No. Did he say we should go and pray to his mom? No. Where did the church get this? Oh, special revelation. The Mormon got their own from Joseph Smith. The Catholic got their own from, uh, from who knows where. Eastern Orthodox got their own. They even pray to the bones of dead people. You serious? You serious? People travel, go on pilgrimage to go and pray to the, to the bones of some dead people. Put, they put in a glass or a tongue of some dead somebody. It remains for them to pray to the head, to the head or to the to the butt of some dead sense. For us to for us to really know that they've all gone crazy. Oh shit. <laughs> it remains for them to begin to pray. Help us, oh buddy of Saint So and so of so -so and so in so -so and so country help us oh heart of so -so and so oh hand of so -so and so feet of so -so and so you serious you really serious you can pray to those things but you cannot talk to the to Jesus and to the father why because there's a mixture of things going on now I want to stop it here Protect your miracle by telling the devil you cannot take from me what belongs to me. You are not authorized and I am not allowing you. So there is a place for you to talk to the Father about these things and there is a place for you to stand your ground. Excuse me, I want you to come from Florida. When it comes to dealing with the devil, stand your ground. Be a Floridian. I'm not being political here. Please. I'm just joking here. But what I'm saying. See the Bible. 
is the most powerful book on the earth. Anything you want, you can get it from it. Begin to pray and tell God that every miracle you have received, you want to keep it. Tell the devil to back off from your miracles. Yes. Tell God to give you miracles, signs, and wonders. Tell him you are willing to receive them. You are willing. And then tell the devil to back off. And let's round off this because I have a service coming. Wherever you are in the world, begin to pray. Begin to pray. Tell God to give you miracles, signs, and wonders. You qualify for it. You are willing to receive it and tell the devil yes. to back off. give you a miracle. People will take it. The devil will stop it. Come on, how about? How about? Satan dambru baka shege. Lady B still there? I'm still here. Okay. Could you read us um could you read us Psalm 104 verse 25 to 37 verse 25 to 37 during the next service. Psalm 104 verse 25 to 37 um excuse me let me just make sure it's june 8th okay that is the sun and then um um let me see those lily are you there online 
Okay, if is is your phone loud enough for you to read? Because it's very it's very faint on my own end here. Uh, how is it now? Any better? Yes, it's better now. Okay. Because we need it loud. Read Act. Act of the Apostles, chapter two, verse one to eleven. Act chapter two, one to eleven. During the next service. Okay. Uh, Psalm 104 only goes up to uh, 35. So should I read uh, Psalm 104, 25 to 35? Okay, I think. Oh, I'm sorry. This um, There are some churches that has, I don't know where they get their own longer, some, some 104 verse 25, they, there are some churches that have tweaked a lot of things, so they make the ass longer. Yeah, let it stop where it stops. Verse 20, uh, 35, 35. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible is not really the same. That's why we have to be very careful about what we are looking at. Okay. Lily, you are reading Act 2, 1 to 11. Uh let me see those who are there. Mayam, are you there? Mayam, are you there? Okay, she's not there. Let me know those who are who, who are with me uh, on the service tonight. Girl, are you there tonight? She's not. Um, let's see. Who is there? Keisha. Keisha from New the Bron York. from the Bronx. New York, Long Island, Point Beach. Okay, Keisha, could you read John twenty, verse nineteen to twenty-three? John twenty, verse nineteen to twenty to twenty-three. Yes. And then. Wait, let me see that it's uh... Okay. Uh, let's see. I want to give to people who have not read on the program. Let them participate. Let me see who again want to volunteer who has never read for us. I. Okay. Rose. Yes. Could you read First Corinthians chapter twelve? First Corinthians chapter twelve verse verse three to seven and then you skip 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 and then you read verse twelve to thirteen. That is one three. That is verse one two to verse one three. That is verse twelve and thirteen. That's first Corinthians chapter twelve. Verse 3 to 7, then you skip, and then you go to verse 12 to 13. So I will see you guys by uh, 9.30 Central Time, which is 10.30 in the East Coast, and 7.30 in the, in, the, in, the, in the West Coast. Let us pray. The Almighty God fill you with the spirit of faith. I'm talking about the spirit of faith. And let it follow you. So that you will be able to appropriate, to make good use of what Jesus has done for you. So that you will never lose it forever and ever. And the prayer that I prayed for you right now is simple prayer. But God is my witness. It has ascended into the heaven on your behalf. This is Dr. Dekai Mary saying to you, Jesus Christ is King and Lord, and He is our God. If you believe that He came to this earth, was born of a virgin, He did ministry right here in the world, 
if you believe that he shed his blood at Golgotha, was buried, and that on the third day he rose again with his physical body, and he did ministry for and talking about the kingdom of God for another 40 days, and then he ascended into heaven and is coming back again. If you ask him to come into your life, he will. If you ask him to be your boss, to be your God, he will come in. Ask him to do that. And he will grant you eternal life and seal it with the promise of the Holy Ghost. That is what the gospel is about. And then you begin to have explosions of wonders, signs, and miracles. And as you begin to receive miracles, don't let anyone cheat you out of your miracles. Amen. The Almighty God bless you and keep you until I see you again in the next one hour. Bye-bye.